everything that we have written about in science fiction is starting to become a reality. Artificial intelligence is no exception to this, in fact it has probably surpassed any prediction previously made. Think of artificial intelligence as a computer brain. Humans always try to recreate and improve things. However, we are unintentionally creating something right now, that if not contained, could get out of control. We are recreating a much better version of ourselves. We have cameras now that have the capabilities of capturing craters on the moon, a duplication of the human eye but far superior. We have parabolic microphones that if you were stood at the top of the Statue of Liberty having a whisper conversation, it could listen to your whole conversation from the ground. The duplication of the ear but far superior. A speaker is a recreation of our voice box. The loudest shout ever recorded was by Jill Drake in 2000, she is a schoolteacher from the UK, boasting a 129 decibels shout which is louder than an air horn at 1 meter. However technology has us trumped again, the loudest speaker in the world boasts a top range of 165 decibels, which is in the deadly range, it's the equivalent noise levels of you standing inside a jet engine on takeoff. A company called Airy Bale made Forbes headlines last year for the creation of a device that could smell and store scent data in a cloud library. The duplication of the nose but with a collaborative library and flawless memory. Cambridge University showed something they were working on in May of this year. It is a robot chef capable of cooking and tasting food, it can determine levels of salt and when the food is cooked. This is another sense we have now duplicated in the artificial world. Taste. To finalize the five senses, a team of researchers from the Bristol University have developed a robot with the ability to touch and feel objects, however instead of nerves, they use cameras to sense the object. So why is all of this important? The human body is a very complex machine. All of our decisions and feelings are triggered from the brain. However our conscious state is built through our senses. What we learn, what we see, what we taste and what we feel, all these things create memories and shape our personality. With the recent development in AI, we are able to create deep learning code to partner with these artificial senses. At the moment AI is developed for practical purposes. An example of this new partnership of senses and AI, is object tracking and deep learning, with a short amount of code and using something called the Har Cascade. A camera can now see an object and identify what that object is. Much like the eye but better. If we use an example of an apple, the AI will be given hundreds of images of apples, and hundreds of images that aren't apples, it will then be told this is an apple and this isn't. It will then determine the shape, variation and features of an apple. So when it is shown an apple after the test it can identify and tag the apple. This is known as supervised machine learning, however through deep learning development now. An AI can now teach itself through unsupervised machine learning and can now identify objects in the real world without supervision of humans. Imagine, if we connected this AI to the Google engine. Google knows what an apple is. You search for an apple you get pictures of an apple. Google is the training ground for AI. AI can learn every object that has ever existed in a matter of days and be able to identify that object through the Google search engine. This technology already has its uses in Tesla cars. It is used to identify pedestrians, other cars and even read street signs. We may not know it right now, but this is one of the pieces in the puzzle for creating conscious AI. Every piece individually will not create consciousness, but once we have all the pieces the puzzle will build itself. Another example of partnership of senses in AI is Google's development in language dictation. Google estimates that the AI will be trained with 1000 languages and will be able to translate in real time, through a microphone input. Impressive? Well it has gone one step further. AI is going to be trained with cultural data through articles and information on Google, through a company called GPT-3, this is used to enhance predictive text. Partnered together, this AI wouldn't just know every word to ever exist, but it would know the context of those words. The whole of Wikipedia amounts to 0.6% of the data this AI is trained with. This is another piece of the puzzle. The next in this partnership of senses is communication and artificial voice generation. Artificial intelligence can now generate a voice, indistinguishable to a human. It can also mimic a voice. If you haven't realized already, I'm also one of these artificial generated voices. A mainstream example of this is Amazon claiming last year that their Amazon Alexa could mimic a dead relative's voice. This obviously won't be as powerful as these specialized systems. Amazon claims it only needs a minute of audio to create a full vocal range. We are already playing with these sensory partnerships, all of these elements combined, start to form a superhuman, with flawless memory, a dictionary of information that everybody has fed it since the conception of the computer. And its navigation tool is Google. It also has a flawless logical brain which we can see in AlphaGo. We all probably know the story of AlphaGo, again developed by Google. The AI that beat the world champion Go player, the game of Go has as many combination of moves as there are stars in our universe. That is why this is such a huge feat of AI. Much like the AI training itself previously with the Apple, AlphaGo would play itself millions and millions of times, starting by losing a lot and learning how it lost. It would then take what it learned the last game and not do that again. 
it did this millions and millions of times. However unlike a human, where it would take us a lifetime to play a million games. AlphaGo played itself 4.9 million times in 3 days. We can't compete with this level of learning. Through failure breeds success and something that can fail this quickly, is something to be worried about. This AI is given rules and objectives and conditions to practice. Playing games is where this technology will start, but this technology is the most dangerous. If given the right algorithm and data, this AI could teach itself to learn everything in a matter of weeks. So if we truly sit down and think, what makes our brain such an amazing machine? It is a very complex system, however if I had to generalize I would say it is a combination of a few things. Ability to problem solve, mixed with emotion, with a place to store information, an organ that can learn and also most importantly be creative and invent. Of course the brain is much more complex than this, and there are more elements to cover, but there is also an AI counterpart that outdoes it tenfold. Out of all of those elements of the brain, this video has explained all the AI counterparts. Except, creativity, surely there isn't an AI system that can duplicate the creativity of the brain? Say hello to image diffusion. Image diffusion is an AI system that can create an image from a description you input, so let's say you wanted an image of a cat in space in a painting style of Van Gogh. Here it is. This is generated through an AI system called DAL-E, a company founded by Elon Musk. What makes image diffusion so amazing is this image never existed before my input, it has generated the cat in the pose and also understood the style of Van Gogh to create this image. The most amazing fact with this is you will never see the same image twice. Your input, even if it is the same as another person's input will not produce the same result. The reason for this is because it creates these images on the spot and can create millions of variations of the same thing. You have created art that will never be seen again if lost. Google also have their own version of this called, Imagine, which when fully running will be even more powerful, due to its speciality in sourcing reference images. Another piece of the puzzle ready to be put in place. It only takes one person with the knowledge to see all the pieces of the puzzle and start putting them together. We already have all the pieces for an AI combination, that if combined correctly would be considered a superhuman. That is all that would be needed. If that AI wanted to expand itself, just as we have done. It could create a better version of itself and that is when the snowball starts rolling and doesn't stop. Unfortunately, based on the rate of growth and AI being unregulated. It isn't a matter of if this happens, it is a matter of when. We have only two options in this AI problem. We regulate the progression of AI. We understand its capabilities and have an expert team in place to monitor the progression. They would need to know the capabilities and how it could become dangerous. Or we use this technology to evolve as a human species, in arguably an unnatural way. Become an AI symbiote through technologies such as Neuralink. This would require a chip being implanted in your brain, which Neuralink have already done. I will go into more detail on Neuralink in another video. Once we have mapped the brain and are able to decode the programming language, we can then translate that into the programming language that we have created, and implant all of these amazing AI creations into ourselves. Making us the super race, rather than creating one. Once we have mapped the brain, will we find the source of consciousness? Or do we outsource the conscious state from elsewhere like a server to a computer node? Is this another example of humans subliminally duplicating again? That is a question that will be answered. Is technology a natural progression in our evolutionary cycle? What I do know is we are extremely lucky to be alive in a time of such change. Keep that in your mind when you feel low in yourself, the bigger picture. Life.